Welcome everybody. This is Chef Wonder Weekly. It is episode 43, which is actually quite nice. It is 43 times once a week already, right, Baldek? We, we haven't actually missed any of this. I think so. I think I think there yeah. was one or so, once or twice once when I was by myself. I know, I'm not sure if you had one without me. Yeah. But yeah, we've been keeping up so far pretty good. And now you're going to yeah. do weird things with, with, with a glove. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's a new toy. There we go. Uh, well, yes, absolutely. Um, anyway, um, I might snap my fingers and then, well, if people haven't seen the movie, they have no clue what I'm talking. So. Well, yeah, plus you can't really snap <laughs> anything with this glove on. Uh, so. uh, yeah, it's it's pretty hard, actually. But anyway, <laughs> so. Now that it's still no, not broken. Now it stick on and, and don't get, get off anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let me get rid of it. Anyway, so <laughs> now, uh, so it is episode 43. Um, and uh, just for everybody who's watching these things, we're not going to actually uh, continue doing this on a weekly basis, or we will have a small break uh, in July. Uh, we, based on after discussions during this week uh, with, the, with the MVP crew and the internal Microsoft people, and we did a map of overlapping how the vacations are when we realized that, well, this doesn't make any sense. We can't actually, it would be too stressful and too demanding for those people who are working to actually make all of this ha stuff happening still. So in July, plus no community calls, no SPDF weekly. Plus it's also a show about news. And if everybody has gone on vacation, well, there is no news. So there's nothing for us to, for the people who are not here, there is nothing to talk about because everybody left too. This picture from the um, unless we do this in a coordinated way, right? So we, we agree with the community beforehand what they will be scheduled to get released on a certain Yeah, so, so if you could already send us out in the articles you're planning to write in the next month, then we could do a recording about it and then we can share when your articles come out. Okay. We can that do makes that. Sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can actually yeah. uh, record a, a demo at BNP, uh, the, the, April, uh, the, the July release in BNP. Let's see. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Can yeah. Do that. We just released the, the June release today uh, because it is Friday, 7th of 6th, uh, so 7th of, of June. Uh, June. Uh, it is typically the first Friday of every single month when we release the, the BMP, classic BMP components. It's, it's why, the, the, the why, why, do we, why do you call why that classic? I, I, like and then I just classic realized, stuff. yeah, why do I call them uh, <laughs> classic? Uh, there's a different set of open source yeah, the best projects. Components. There's the BMP project, BMP Nuket, and the BMP PowerShell is getting released on a monthly basis uh, on the first Friday of every single month. Now, the CLI has a different uh, release cycle. BMP JS has a slightly different release cycle and all of that. The, the reason why we actually do this in the first Friday of every single month is that on second Tuesday of every single month, we have a monthly community call. And there we're going to then do a summary on what has happened and what has been released. I think so. you guys might be the only group that actually ships on Friday. That's actually a good point. Yes. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that is a fair point. Well, it's well. well I mean, the um, probably the only thing worse is to ship on a weekend, which we we do in CLI. <laughs> true. <laughs> true. True. <laughs> well, that is a actually it doesn't really matter as long as we ship stuff and make folks happy. Thing does exactly. Matter. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. But it's Friday. And in Monday these Tuesday. cases, it's a, a new version. Uh, so uh, the fallback is always going back on the previous version. So it's not like we're not actually shipping a new version of SharePoint online on Friday because that would be catastrophic. No, we're not doing that. So if there would be any challenges. Well, but I guess even with that, it's not like snap, you snap your glove and it's magically available to everybody at once. It takes. Or is it? If or, I put or is my glove it? on, <laughs> <laughs> ah, then it's going to happen. <laughs> Feature deployment glove. Yeah. <laughs> you should have power to deploy to your tenant immediately. Don't have to wait. Yes. No target, Worldwide. please. Worldwide. What was Worldwide it? Uh, 100 and, I think it was Jeff Deeper said in the, in the, in the keynote in the SPC that it's 180,000 servers hosting SharePoint Online uh, worldwide. So. I'll like update it, right? How hard can it be, right? I mean, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> push it. <laughs> Laws of physics or whatever they are, but hey, anyway. So. Well, I mean, they have internet at the same time, so you can just push the things <laughs> to them at the same time, right? I mean, <laughs> it's not That's okay, there's a, That's a page or works. like a messenger, like bringing envelopes from one to another, and it takes them like two days to get to <laughs> the last one, right? Which is actually absolutely good. Or, point. or do they run the old ring, ring Ethernet, which is like, is it you? No. Is it you? No. Is it you? And then it's like, <laughs> that's old school, definitely. Yes. 
<laughs> Just use USB uh, sticks, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I, it wasn't that long ago when the USB sticks were still the fastest way of getting anything migrated even to a right. cloud, uh, because it's by far the fastest way is to copying stuff from the USB or USB desktops or hard disks and then send them to a snail yeah, mail the process, or yeah, whatever. Official migration story in the it process. is like yeah. you just ship your drive and we'll take care of it. Yes, because it's much Luckily, faster than those days are gone. Uh, well, I think it's still a valid option in certain uh, regions, right? Because it's not like the upload speeds are so fast. So depends on the connection. Yeah. Now, anyway, uh, it is Friday and uh, I'm at least uh, bored. Uh, well, not bored. I'm, I'm kidding. Bored. <laughs> oh, Definitely not bored. You can still if you want me. You know, yeah, I'll fine. I'll I'll can I can continue. You can, uh, or you have to you can just chill. This, this is the downside of doing this actually with completely non-scripted. So uh, whatever comes to block. <laughs> 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 but, but what have you guys been up to during this week? So anything, anything cool? Uh, everything is cool, obviously. It's SharePoint Online and Office 365. So it's it's Friday. And we it's Friday. It's time to release yeah. on Friday. So we did the release today. <laughs> yes, we did. Woo! 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 Yes. Uh, PowerShell core modernization. Uh, I think. And oh, oh, but you said something. You said something which people might be getting confused. Is that PowerShell core? PowerShell slash core slash modern. Right, because yeah. PowerShell core is a we different thing, right? We wish to be able to release PowerShell core, though. Yes. To be honest, yes. you know, that's on our wish list for, for a long, long time, and, and it's kind of painful that we're not there yet, but yeah. we're getting closer each month. Uh, so uh, at a certain point, we'll finally be there and, and be able to release a core version of PNP, uh, the core, core library of PowerShell, uh, everything else. So will, the, will it then be then called PNP size core core? 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 <laughs> Core Sharp. sharp. <laughs> Core Sharp. Go PowerShell. Core Core was even the wrong name because it's it does not stand at that point. So yeah. We need to true. think about new names at that point and then that's true. There's a way true. it's kind of a moment in time where we can kind of really rethink what we have today and, and yeah. prep for the future, be ready again for the next five years. So. Yeah. And and just to be clear on that one, right now we're still, it's, it is actually on SharePoint engineering side of the, the house, uh, which is still the, the kind of, a, we're trying to make things happen. And it's not about the fact that we, you would be unable to reference the standard and compile the things, it's changes inside of our build system and build processes, which are actually the bottleneck. Um, so that takes still some time. Um, how to get it out is a simple thing. The implications of getting it out is much bigger than people might be actually thinking. Uh, because as an example, the SharePoint online PowerShell has a dependency on the CSM uh, uh, NuGet packages and everything else. So do we change that and how do we do that and, and what are the impl other implications? So anyway, so we are working. Interesting thing once we have it, I think, and then we really need yes. to uh, yeah, come up with a, like a, a future-proof plan and vision for this Absolutely. altogether. Absolutely. Well, and, and and with that, I wonder to what point is going to be like the you know the CKY, no no the what what Y2K bug, you know like everybody's <laughs> like it's going to be the big thing and it's going to change and then midnight not all is all is good right so so the and the same thing here like everything oh yeah it's going to be interesting and then it ships and it works and everybody's like. Cool, I think that's, have it now. that's pretty much what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. so, because you can it achieve like the same entry, entry, as you can achieve this ex, uh, the same end results already with the existing tech. The thing is, though, uh, getting the .NET standard version of the season uh, will unblock people to use that in the .NET Core and .NET standard okay. implementation. If you want so, all the people visiting on your Xbox, at that point you can do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because well, of the I first think there are, I think there are other interesting things as well, like for example, to be able to run it in Docker and then to use yeah, more of that sure, in a cloud. Let's, sure, let's say sure, the sure. technologies in a cloud that are being used nowadays as opposite to 2010, where that Absolutely. originally shipped and, and originates from, you know, the time Absolutely. moved on, but that part is still in that past. Yeah. Docker, cross-platform, uh, shell, PowerShell. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Now, related on the cross-platform operations, uh, what's anything new on, new on the CLI side of the house? Yeah, so you guys mentioned the naming and trying to think about like, what would you rename uh, PNP core, core when it becomes to the core? And we go through, <laughs> through the same exercise and we're, we're realized 
that so is um, CLI exists now for a little more over a year and a half, and over time we gathered like things that if you put them next to each other, the names don't match or variables. Like we 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 have the long argument name and then short one when it ma makes sense. And when you put them next to each other, they not always align or the command names are like don't really match. And now we try to okay, so we're plan plan to have version two, which is a um, chance for us to have raking changes. So yep. we want to to use that to basically realign the names and make them make sense. And we realized that naming things is the hardest things in dev. Yep. Like make things to work yes. is just like <laughs> there is an easy way around it. But to name things and then have like an idea, we want to like the way we want to approach this is to come with okay, so this is how we name things, and then we can put everything against. It's like okay, oh, okay, does this make sense? Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Right? Basically, to have to start from the idea and then create the names, as opposite to create names and then kind of like wing it. Yeah. And it's it's tough because there are exceptions there are things that don't make sense you're like well ideally like well, we yeah. originally created this we we had a reason for that but it's kind of like it doesn't fit it's, it's a naming convention meaning and in the end you, you built a perfect naming convention you're ready and then one month later you you have to do you something will have an like, exception again like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. yeah it, it doesn't it again fit, breaks yeah. my convention that, that, that goes to the nice thingy uh, yeah and and yeah, so, example it, it's the same challenges with the, for example, it's just even with PowerShell command line naming. Yep. The, 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 or what is the verb on what well, you're actually at, doing? Which is at like, least ah. there is some verbs that are approved. Well, so actually in PowerShell yeah. it's easier because there is a fixed list of verbs, mm -hmm. but the problem is that so, sometimes you have something that does, doesn't really match the <laughs> verb, but you have to like no, fit that. that square peg into the round hole because these are the verbs you have. Yep. Yeah, so we're going through that. We're trying to align it, but now you mentioned it. It almost feels like, you know what? Does it even make sense? Is it worth the effort? Because it's not not, not, not trivial. We have, I think, now oh, about 280 commands and trying to align them, like plan all of that. It's like, oh, yeah. I mean, I have a pen too. Yeah, I, I have the same orange, ones. and it's even oh, orange. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have the same ones. You have uh, Microsoft Pen, yes. I yeah. don't work at Microsoft, so. Um, sorry, sorry. We got distracted on the pens. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Friday. Like, it's Friday. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, now I just realized this is a good example that it's Friday. Uh, we didn't even introduce who's our visitor today this week. So, <laughs> because everybody should know who the person is we're talking to, right? <laughs> no, no, no. So, you know what? Stop, 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 stop. Let's make it a qu quiz. The first person on Twitter mm -hmm. to tell us the name of our visitor will not ah, get, get anything. That's, that's actually. <laughs> Let's agree on that. <laughs> Mr. X until then. Mr. X, um, are we going to put you on the on the uh, blog post of the we're not going to uh, probably even do that. Mm -hmm. Can't do that then. So we will ship some uh, some swag and uh, stickers, stickers and some stickers. We have stickers. Stickers. I will. Uh, well, yes, we'll actually for first person who will reply on the official SP Dev Weekly announcement on Tuesday. Uh, who is the person who is the visitor right uh, in here? So, so you have <laughs> to go. say his <laughs> full name and anything else. Uh, home address. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually good. Now, this is a good uh, competition. We will promise to send this one. This is 50 stickers, Parker stickers, for the first person who's actually. 50 Parker stickers. That proves stickers. that the person is actually uh, watching this video and then realizing that, hey, I need to actually reply on that tweet. So 50 Parker stickers coming up for you. Yes. Um, don't, don't give the, the details. Home details out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't need to do the research. Well, like, are you this, Mr. X? Yeah. Cool. Uh, now um, uh, we will actually let's go to the articles, and we'll talk about some of the stuff which our Mr. Guest <laughs> has done. So now and I wonder: Is there any article that that would, that, would, that we have Pratt with his name on it? No, oh, there is no, no, no. no. It's uh, just a GitHub account, so uh, it's not giving the name away. So no, uh, that's not, fine. not at all. Not at all. Not <laughs> 
But again, it's all about who's active and who's actually uh, uh, what paying attention. Who's paying, paying attention. attention? Yes, indeed. And uh, also, who's watching the a video as opposite to listen to audio? Uh, that's true because um, that's a good point. Um, people have been actually requesting that we should start uh, releasing this as a podcast as well. So, which wouldn't be that difficult to do so because we're chatting actually quite a lot. Split, split the thing. Uh, yeah, and now on a screen you see ha. Huh. No, but it, it's <laughs> even even when we talk about articles, it's pretty log logical what we talk about and and the things what we talk about. And plus the fact that it's not just about articles. It's, it's about well, except when we're recording on Friday, then the logic part, the logical part is maybe left. Out. Yeah, absolutely correct. <laughs> this. Yeah, this is not that structural. It's, it's like it's Friday, it's, it's, Monday. it's a Friday. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's organized chaos. <laughs> Good. Um, I'm just and writing myself. Uh, uh, yes. Note to self: Do not record Note on Friday. Self. Yes. <laughs> Should we? No, no, you should not record on Friday. That does go sideways. Anyway. Things not to do on Friday. Do not ship, do not record. <laughs> yes. We should make a list. Um, focus. Uh, focus. 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 Now, um, on, um, your, our Mr. Guest uh, has been one of the first. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we get this at the end of the call. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who has been uh, highly active on doing the modernization stuff. And, and one of the things which we actually released six hours ago, apparently, because it says so uh, in the <laughs> in here, uh, the latest version is the June 2019 release related on the modernization. And the modernization tooling is basically your baby. Uh, to be honest, you, you uh, <laughs> Uh, now this is getting really difficult. You started um, based, technically the whole PMP journey started with you when you and me actually started uh, building stuff together, and then we went uh, open source first internally and then externally, and then it's grown from there. Thank you actually being part of that uh, journey. Um, but the modernization tooling now lately has been kind of your new baby, one of the new babies. Um, <laughs> that's even... One of the better babies. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, I don't that's, know. That's, that's this the is going to south. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> Focus. Uh, now, can you talk about what, what is the, the modernization tooling all about and, and what is the new stuff? So what, where are we heading with this? Why is it important? Why would people care? Uh, why should they care? First of all, what's why we care is because we, we as Microsoft uh, keep on shipping great new stuff, uh, new, new features, new functionality, new UIs. but well, if you do not nothing, then you kind of stuck with the older technology, the older UI. So, and modernization tools and guidance are there to help you move your old sites. They're not really old, but they look old potentially because they're using older UI, old libraries, yeah. old pages. And people want to use a consistent experience, which is modern. And, and that's why. And also for Microsoft, we invest in modern. Our, our uh, your features go over there mainly, uh, and if you want to benefit from the latest and greatest, you have to be on modern. And, and this is what this tools and guidance will help you do. So, so we we have yep. a scanner that you can run to kind of understand where are you, what is holding you back to go to modern, what things do you need to uh, fix. Yeah. Uh, and then the other main thing actually is everything around page transformation because there was like a a gap inside. The Microsoft APIs inside the Microsoft offering. We we yeah. have modern UIs, but we don't have a way to get you there. Modern UIs, yeah. And, and that's why this, this project came up actually like more than a year ago for about a one. I think it's about one year more or less now that this is, exists. And this evolved a lot over the last years. Oh yeah, the last year. Sorry. Uh, getting slowly but surely getting uh, external contributions as well. It's not, not just uh, me uh, working on this. So. Um, and one of the, actually one of the things that, that uh, was done by community is pretty cool is, is is helping with publishing page support. So um, being able to uh, take that old classic publishing portal and, and start modernizing it. Now, just before you uh, think too optimistic, uh, meaning a publishing portal is a complex thing. Uh, this does page transformation. So yeah. you would always have to kind of think about the new information architecture, build the communication sites, use hubs, uh, use modern site page content types. But once you've done that work, you can take the old page and boom, move it over to the new page in the communication site. And what's really cool actually is that we can actually do this as well from on-prem. So you go to your SharePoint on-prem publishing portal, 2013, 2016, 2019, you connect to it, read the page and boom, move it over to a communication site in SharePoint Online directly. No hassle, nothing. 
don't have to fully migrate the portal first to online as a classic portal, then do the modernization. You simply can lift the page from on-prem and ship it to uh, online, which is something that yeah. I think no one ever, no one does. So it's a cool feature. Yeah, that's that's a new feature uh, now in preview, like I said. So basically, it's a, is it a PowerShell? It's a PowerShell call, uh, or or is it a API which you're calling with a it's a URL to the source and URL to the target, or how does it actually work? Kind practice? of, yeah. So in the end, okay. page transformation is, is a .NET library. Uh, it's available yeah. as a new package. Uh, so to, it uses system APIs. So you have two system objects, one connection to the on-prem, one connection to online, and then you it, it simply works. Like a, <laughs> it's it simply works. works. <laughs> the gloves, the gloves. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. It simply works. <laughs> uh, for the PowerShell side, yeah, meaning we use PNV PowerShell online to connect to on-prem, but it works. Uh, uh, so you just yes. get a peep on top of that. So uh, uh, no, it works if you don't hit an API, which is not supported in uh, yeah. And that no. Uh, yes. Yeah. I Meaning, if, if the APIs are there, it, uh, it works, and, and the basic things that we do do work. So uh, you speak partial online. You connect to your on-prem uh, portal. You connect to your online uh, target site, and you provide the, the context to the transformation commandlet, which is a uh, convert to dash pnp client side page, and voila. That's it. It will happen. Yeah. It will even copy all the uh, depending assets. So if your on-prem page refers to an image living in the same site collection, we just grab the image, move it over, put it in the site assets folder of the communication site, uh, and so you get. We do a, we do that. We do URL uh, mapping, URL renames. So we try to re rewrite the URL so they don't point back to your on-prem environment. Yep. Uh, we do not yet do like a user uh, account mapping, etc. So if you have uh, item level permissions on the on-prem side, we kind of skip that for now. But that's, this is a preview version, so uh, yep. there's plans to have more uh, migration capabilities actually inside, like a uh, need user uh, account mapping, for example, or more advanced URL mapping. Uh, yeah. So and then obviously this one, uh, this one certainly will help people moving on to, from on-premises. And this is not really migrating. Well, it's 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 not really. Well, it is kind of migrating the content, to be fair, uh, from on premises, classic publishing to communication sign. Yeah. Um, summation slash migration in one go, actually. Yeah. Well, so that is an interesting thing, right? Because so in the past, I used to build a lot of internet sites on SharePoint. And like one of the things that you could do in publishing sites was to have a content type with different fields and then have them assigned to different things and then show them all over the page. How okay. do you deal with that? Um, well, we, we can support that actually. One of the other features that we added, actually, actually in the June release, is, is being able to use the, the page properties web part. So we, gotcha. we uh, generate the page, and you can define in, in our mapping model like, okay, these five fields, I want them to be visible on, on the page. So they will appear in the page properties web part, which you put on the page. You choose where you put it, which column, which row, and cool. it will be there. That is nice. And, and what's really important to realize as well, that it actually does work for custom web parts as well. Can you talk about uh, that one? So because a lot of the, the lot of the, the people actually have custom web parts built using farm solution in on-premises. And then there's the discussion and I don't know, I can't, but I can because these are, these are here. So how would you do the transition and how does the mapping work? Uh, if you have, an, let's say you need to have an old uh, SharePoint uh, uh, classic solution on-prem with your web parts. Web part is business critical. You still need it. I think that's the first question. Like, don't rewrite yeah, anything yeah, that that's you don't true. need. But let's assume you, it's you really need this thingy. You build a SharePoint framework based web part. You deploy it to your uh, SharePoint online environment, and then you uh, update our mapping to uh, take to kind of say like this old web part, which has a particular name, your namespace, uh, company, yeah. contoso dot. Uh, I know contoso dot name blah, yeah. blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, that's the namespace name of the web part. And you just say, okay, this goes now to my uh, new uh, customer part where you define yeah. it in, in our mapping file and you specify the custom mapping file and yeah. that should be it. So it's really extendable and, and uh, flexible uh, so you can kind of do everything with it. Um, well, that's probably too much, but you can do, a lot of <laughs> you can do anything with it. That's a great way of you telling you have been working. Drop a path with it. <laughs> you can, you've been clearly working in the micro, uh, US based company for a long time because yeah. you've learned this great way of promoting I, I, this. I've Vegas, so. and uh, that's not good. So, <laughs> <laughs> I can now, 
maybe one more thing and then let's go to the articles but one more thing kind of also to kind of maybe potentially reveal uh, we're looking into actually uh, uh, building a, a centralized service in the same way as we have the provisioning service for doing uh, transformation uh, during as uh, well starting from autumn so let's see how fast we're going to do that it's going to be free community driven PMP supported we're looking into also solving uh, the supportability uh, discussions uh, on all of this stuff uh, so there will be an SLA and it will be supported uh, whatever that means uh, all of that right. is now being kind of a plant on but the whole point is that using the NuCat, using the PowerShell might feel too complicated and we get that and uh, so we want to kind of uh, reduce the, the fracture the, the, what's the right term reduce the complexity yeah, make it, make it easier it, make it easier make it more approachable in, in, in the same um, kind of topic the same same topic um, there's also uh, partners I'm going to name any names but uh, like partners ICs even big ICs. <laughs> like partners yeah. there are partners uh, like partners yeah, people, people, <laughs> people people building tools uh, people building migration tools etc that are looking into can can they actually do something like this because they get demands from their customers as well like people yep. want to modernize and, and and they go to the typical migration partners like hey can you make this happen for me yes so we might see other uh, kind of evolutions in the direction where Kind of this really type good. of approach really and technology good. becomes more mainstream, which will help the broader. Where community. we then work, we as a Microsoft work together with these partners for the during uh, with this open source uh, solution, so everybody will be able to benefit out of it. Uh, because um, yeah. and one thing to realize that transformation is different operation than migration. Migration content typically doesn't actually take your your customizations with you. That's migrating content. So the transformation of the functionality is, is a completely different discussion, different, and that's why. Yeah this thing actually exists. Now, uh, let's actually go through some articles and let's get back on the uh, on the discussions after that as well. Good discussion, um, but a few articles to go through from this week and there was actually more and more actually again happening stuff. Uh, for the past weeks, there was a lot of conferences which reduced uh, the, the definitely the what was happening in the community. But this one was really good from uh, Vera Sekar. Uh, around using uh, PMPJS uh, and creating a SharePoint framework web part with crude operations uh, with that. So really, really great tutorial, actually quite long. One step at a time explaining how things could actually be done. And then there's the, the buttons of making that happen. And this is using the, the PMPJS, uh, which is the right uh, model to use, and rather than using the PMPJS core, which is quite legacy and old stuff. So this one is, is evolving uh, forward and the version 2.0 is coming out relatively soon, which is really, really cool stuff. Um, Patrick had a session last week in, was it last week? Last week, yes, oh, in Wiesbaden uh, around the BMPH, uh, BMPJS V2. Uh, it's really, really, really cool stuff. So, and it's getting insanely widely used as well. Um, I think we had 10,000 tenants in every single month using BMPJS nowadays, which right. is like, wow. Cool. So really cool. Um, uh, quite quite a nice uh, milestone for a well. It's close to ten thousand. We're going to hit the ten thousand pretty soon with BMPJS. But nice milestone for an open source project. Absolutely. So. Uh, save emails to SharePoint with Microsoft Flow. Uh, Flow Ninja. John Liu. Uh, John Liu has an MVP. I think he's an MVP for both SharePoint and Flow, unless I'm mistaken. But anyway, he yeah, has a business apps. Business apps. Yeah. It's called. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, this business. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what they're. What it's called. <laughs> I don't know. He's an MVP anyway. MVP. Um, yes. MVP. Uh, he has this Flow Studio app, uh, which, um, and you can read more about it uh, in John's uh, in John's uh, book and on his services. But basically, there's a more complex uh, UI where you can manage more easily flows um, in a single UI rather than if it's just. Well, he's been evolving that uh, for a few years already. Um, but John is a master of flow, absolutely. And this is a good example of a story where how do you uh, save your important emails to SharePoint with a Microsoft Flow? So when the email is arriving, then you actually uh, take that email and save that to a safe location in the SharePoint, which would be then a centralized location for storing the information. Now, is that something what you want to do? Maybe debatable. And uh, this is one way of actually just uh, storing important emails to a different location. But again, it shows the, the flexibility of the flow as well. Not a massive amount of things to do, and you're able to actually save that email as a file inside of SharePoint. So quite powerful. 
So Teams Directory using SPFX and Microsoft Cloud from Robbia Williams, really cool web part. Uh, so um, our web part or Microsoft Teams tabs and something which quite simple, but still useful. So having a list of teams available and then click the join to the teams. So you, you could easily can see what are the teams which are available in the organization. And you could absolutely host the same piece of code in SharePoint and in, in as a Microsoft Teams tab, um, because that's really easy, absolutely. Now, SharePoint APIs and Microsoft Flow uh, uh, podcast. Uh, so Microsoft 365 Developer Podcast. If, you, if you're not aware, if you don't follow this, um, Jeremy and Paul, you should. Uh, really great podcast. Uh, podcast uh, series and on the latest ones uh, there was SharePoint API discussions and a craft discussions uh, with Jeremy Kelly and Kathy do and Jeremy Kathy basically owns our SharePoint uh, list library sites uh, OneDrive so files folders uh, APIs in Microsoft craft so all of that stuff which is evolving uh, is owned by Jeremy and Kathy uh, in the background and uh, so really great discussion and have a look on definitely on the Microsoft 365 developer podcast in general Good, good, good stuff. Now, uh, this one was really cool. A SharePoint framework bookmarklet tool for quick and easy debugging. Uh, so basically, uh, how you can really easy then uh, do. Yeah, save, save you some time to not, not having to save. do the URLs yeah. each time again. You just yep. click on the link and yep. you get the debug URL for your SharePoint framework yep. extension. Exactly. Exactly. Really cool. Really, really cool. And I, and, I, and I actually you see in there in an interesting thing because Ilya recorded screencast of this article where he had the bookmarklet. So inception, right? Because he's recording this screen while writing this screen, like right, this article. Yeah, that's yeah. My friends, and, and actually you can see that the original article doesn't have the video because he was recording that. True, true. And then he could have re re recorded with the video on it. Mm, it's Friday, but this, this goes weird. <laughs> uh, uh, next article, next article. Anyway, good stuff from Ilya. <laughs> My brains are exploding pretty soon. Um, they're, they're overheating, overheating already. Um, it is actually, I have to say this, it is apparently 30, 30, 35 degrees in my uh, office right now. It is insanely hot outside. 35, wow. 35, yes. Um, well, it's nothing. I'm a I'm I'm a Finn, so I'm used to sauna, so it doesn't really matter that much. So when it's up to seventy, I don't need to go to sauna anymore. There we go. Now um, <laughs> we should shouldn't record on Fridays. This is just <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, from Search A, uh, uh, building a single page application with React, MSAL, and PMPJS. So this is actually really cool. So this is a good reminder that PMPJS is not just about necessarily uh, about running uh, SPFX. Uh, so this is a, a slightly different use case for using PMPJS because it works against the SharePoint REST APIs as well. Uh, and also how do we use the, the MSAL JS uh, to connect to the uh, using the graph information. So quite a long article, uh, but definitely worthwhile as a step-by-step -step guidance uh, on how things are actually happening and what's happening. Um, good, really cool stuff from Search A. Uh, Go and then uh, we had a good uh, blog post from Albert or uh, Abby uh, Albert Jan Scott from Emma Venton around a uh, list of failed site designs in your tenant. So basically, there every now and then there might be challenges related to site designs. It might be do out of the box issues. It might be do whatever reasons. You can actually get a list of those uh, using uh, what would be the power show of getting a list of those which are failed, and because you could use then this to reapply the site designs if they have been fixed or, or confirm that the settings and configuration have been applied to those sites. So it makes perfect sense. Uh, or just cool check stuff. if it actually succeeded as well. Same logic applies to get yep. to check whether the true. site design was applied absolutely. successfully. Absolutely, absolutely. That is true. And then as, uh, same also from Appy uh, around how I got more involved in open source. And this is actually quite nice article related on, uh, on the challenges was quite often people are having, which is like, how would I get involved? How do I contribute? How do I, is, is my sample good enough? And the answer is absolutely, it's good enough. If you create a sample, it is definitely good enough for getting shared uh, for others. I think people are way too scared of exposing what they do, uh, unfortunately, and, and we should definitely encourage people to, to be more involved. Um, and it's, it doesn't mean that if you, like in the Abyss case, it doesn't mean that you have to be there in every single week. But contributing every now and then, if you find a bug or find a fix, um, 
getting creating a pull request or at least submitting an issue which is defining this other issues is super important because it's beneficial for everybody in a way you would almost think that we should have some something that we can use to award people who contribute to pnp or to open source in one way or another first time yes. basically to yes. walk to to have them set the first step and basically experience firsthand that it's not sc uh, scary or complicated that you don't even need to be deaf because you can help with docs you can help yep. with videos you can fix typos you yes. can write spec you can do things yep. you know and, yes. and yes. Ev everything helps test and uh, just absolutely. just use it to give feedback yeah, and and actually that's a good discussion point. I stop sharing intentionally, but that's a really awesome discussion point on the on the fact that what would you say for a, first of all, uh, what would you say for the people who are then saying back, no, no, it's not my job to do that stuff. It's Microsoft's job to deliver all of this documentation and samples. Well, yes, but these are so there are there are things that are part of the product, and you can you can expect that Microsoft works on the quality of that, the uptime, the SLA, and so forth and so on. But then there is also a bigger thing. Uh, another part of things that we community build, like PowerShell, uh, CSOM, uh, PNPJS, CLI controls, uh, JSON formatters, like there's plenty of that. And sure, it is not your job, but if everybody thought exactly that way, nothing would be done. Like Correct. we would, yeah. we would be nowhere, right? So yeah, sure, it makes people's life easier. So if you yeah, if you save absolutely. time in your project and you, and you can deliver high quality content to your customers. Yeah, and you exactly. do so you fix something. Why not give it back to the community? So because you can exactly have, uh, got a head start by community. Yep. Yeah, so yeah. And, and basically, yeah. if we if we even if we think about how we started with the BMP in the first place, the whole whole thing started from the from the realization of this is stupid, and we need to change how we do business and how do we share the code uh, first so, internally. And then externally, because it was idiotic and no friends, uh, I'm not going to go details on on the on the on the cases and everything else. But back in when it was it 2006, uh, 2013, 13. It's horrible. This is it's terrifying. <laughs> but but at the time in our organization where I was working, there was a lot of people writing code for customers, but nobody was sharing anything. Nobody was really sharing those learnings. Yeah, but it mean, was, was a different time, right? There was a yeah, different time with absolutely. regards to the IP uh, mentality was different and so forth sure, and so on, right? Sure. So again, that changed. But, uh, and, and we changed. And but how do we change this? If you think about how do we make the change is that we are the people who are setting example. I'm not saying that we are the people in this call. We are the people who are watching this uh, video. We are the people who are contributing. We are the people who are actively contributing in the open source community and making the change happen. Um, and that's that's we can actually see the change. We can see the change even uh, in the way how Microsoft is now ways nowadays behaving and messaging stuff and and promoting the open source uh, and because it has a massive impact for the ecosystem. Now, if there are people who don't have a time and or they're not interested in contributing, you don't have to, but definitely um, you can reuse the stuff anyway, but then we absolutely welcome people to be more involved. Uh, also, I want to call out David Warner. David Warner has uh, explicitly called out in Twitter saying, if you want to have a, a quick uh, meeting, he'll show you uh, how you can actually share and how you can modify cool. stuff and how, yeah. how you can that's actually use the GitHub to do stuff. Yeah, that's a real good, uh, good initiative, actually. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. GitHub might be a barrier. There might be some technical yeah, absolutely. things that keep you back, absolutely. especially if you're not, not a developer per se, but then if you're like an, a person using, for example, PowerShell CLI and you have an issue, like yeah. sometimes it's, it's hard to, to fix something because you don't know how to do it, but yeah, yep. like that. Yeah. But yeah. even then, just... To, Adding an issue in the issue list already helps us. It will absolutely kind of make absolutely. other folks aware of this is something that can be done, and some other, maybe someone else picks it up and does something for you. Uh, but yeah. just be vo vocal. Uh, tell us what you need. Tell us constructive what as well. Construct yeah, give feedback. What was actually kind of uh, kind of a good example of the power of the open source as well. Uh, it, it's well, it's not a necessary good example from Microsoft perspective or engineering perspective, but um, these things do happen. So when was it? Two weeks ago? Uh, three weeks ago? There was a uh, uh, recession just, uh, 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 just before Vegas. Germany. Just before Vegas. Vegas. Just before Vegas. Okay. Yeah. So there was a, a small accident, uh, a human error, uh, and code was actually checked in, which was causing an issue related on content types 
in SharePoint Online. But what was really interesting around that resolution was that uh, we actually were able to fix and provide a workaround for that using the open source channels faster then the engineering would be able to roll out the fix on the server side. So we were able to provide an updated NuGet package uh, in a matter of minutes to be available for everybody who was running into that, which was actually had a workaround. And then at the same time, engineering was already fixing the issue and rolling out to that 180,000 servers, which takes time. It's not a snap of a finger. So that was really a good example wow. of the power. If only <laughs> the power they had the gloves. The uh, <laughs> yes. That, that, I'd shift the gloves to Redmond. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the magic of the cloud. Oh, sorry. Let me put the lights on. There we go. Ah. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good example of the power of the community. And so, and more and more, we are seeing these kind of similar stories. So the community, the the stuff what we do in community is getting people unblocked. Um, as an example, just a simple example, CLI is a good example. Um, I still love the story that it basically started from the fact that, well, it started from the article which I wrote, which was around, this is how you use Office 365 CDN uh, to get with yeah. your SPFX uh, web and yeah, like and then, Mac. How do I run PowerShell exactly. on Mac? I, no. And it really started from that. Well, yeah. it wasn't able to actually enable CDN in his Mac or yeah. using the Mac. So, yeah. which, is, which is a fair point. It's like, well, so you need to have a windows to manage your tenant a vm okay. yeah so every time I, I i need to do something was, i need to start start a vm yeah 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 that was not really the right way yeah so good that you have cli now yes, yes. Plus, it it, yeah, no i wonder problem. i wonder with that to what degree things will change when we will have powershell or the spo or pnp powershell available on um, uh, powershell core yeah i wonder to what degree things will change because like one thing that surprises me in a way is that if you look at, at CLI, the usage, majority is actually on Windows. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think so it's, it's actually not... the, the mentality of running the stuff in, in the console. That's driving the CLI usage. Um, and and that's, there's definitely uh, room for both. Uh, there's the people who love yeah. PowerShell and like PowerShell and the, it's there's no wrong or right. Uh, yes. If you prefer both to have a CLI. Yeah. Yeah. If you can achieve the same end result in both sides, why would we just drop another one away saying don't use that? No. Exactly. No. It's like, yeah, um, I, I like to to use the example of the things that I do in Azure, right? There is PowerShell, there is CLI, there is room for for both. No matter if you run it exactly, like you can do, you can try to squeeze your pen between your fingers. That will obviously not. <laughs> okay, and now snap. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you can't. Sorry. There you go. Sorry. 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 <laughs> Right, so so it's like the, the things that they do in Azure. You can you always have the choice of PowerShell or CLI, no yes. matter if you run it yourself or even in the the cloud shell that they have available. Yeah, you still have you always have the choice. You want to do this, you can do that. You want to do this, right? And then in the end, it's up to you, your personal preference or skills, whether you use the one or the other. Yeah, yep. absolutely. It's good. It's good to have choice. So meaning. Yeah, absolutely. And like, I guess that like to have a like, in the end, it's also in our, and you could even say the Microsoft interest as well, to try to cater to as broad audience developers and admins as you can. Correct. And you can Correct. only achieve absolutely. that by offering a choice as opposite to try people to make work your way. And I think the, the making people work in our ways uh, was a mentality of Microsoft at some point. Uh, absolutely. It was for a long, and, long and, time, actually. Yeah. Like, if yeah, you wanted to do stuff with us, you had to be on Windows. You had to yeah. do this. You had to yeah. do that. That yeah. world is gone. That world is definitely gone. I, I think. Well, it's... what's in your cup? <laughs> Water. <laughs> it's it's, it's sure. a big bug. It's Friday. Yes. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, I think that's enough for this. That's true. But anyway, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm not going to say the name uh, because we don't want to give it away. Uh, there was a competition. Um, so we'll see who's going to crap the, the 50. Did I promise to send 50? Can yes. I send 50? Can I send the 50 is the least, but I don't know how to send that in an envelope. Well, you put it into it an envelope, in you close it, you write yeah, the address, you know. That's fair. I can actually probably. You if can make I open it slightly the... harder, Professor. So because you mentioned uh, my name once, so you can ask for the exact time when they. <laughs> Did I mention your you name? Mentioned, you mentioned my name once. Really? Really? I didn't. I I missed uh -huh. that. 
Ha 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 ha. So watch the video one more time or two times and try to figure out. <laughs> that's forced. That's uh, forced. Yes. Well, no, no, no. So that's actually good because now that we are in the end and now we mentioned that somewhere in the past, how we talked for a long, long, long time, right? So somewhere in the past, like if you give us the exact time uh, stamp, you will, you will get another 50. Uh, <laughs> No, I'm not promising that. You can well <laughs> promise that. <laughs> I don't have stickers. <laughs> you can order those, uh, which is a good point as well. The the Parker uh, image is available in GitHub, in githubscom uh, pmp. You can order as many stickers as you want. Uh, it's royalty uh, free it's for you. It's royalty free, absolutely, absolutely. There's a BMP one and there's SPFX one there as well. Um, it might be actually that whoever is winning this one, it's an easier for me to order a new pack of 50 <laughs> stickers and send and it. And have them ship the rather to the person. Exactly, rather than going to the postal office. I don't even know where postal office is nowadays. Because it's... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, times are changing, so let's actually uh, close up. But um, any last word, Waldek? Any last word, uh, the Mister? Mister? Uh, 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> Almost. It was uh, so close. <laughs> two words: keep modernizing. Keep modernizing. There you go. Keep modernizing. Uh, keep modernizing. Write SPFX stuff. We have awesome stuff with you. Uh, I'm not going to snap my fingers uh, because in the movie something bad happened when he was snapping his fingers, right? Uh, for those who are watching these things, I haven't actually seen the, the end game yet. No, me neither. So I'm, yeah, so don't blow it. We don't want to see, uh, see the, the outcome. I'm waiting for it to come to the DVD or to rental, so which should happen hopefully soon. Um, Anyway, have a nice weekend, uh, and you're watching this probably starting from Tuesday, so have a, a nice next weekend. <laughs> it, it makes you want to be Friday again. Yeah, yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But keep modernizing, keep doing SharePoint Framework, keep on giving us feedback. If you want your article being mentioned on these things and, and discussed about, uh, do hashtag SP the weekly so we know about what you're writing. Uh, uh, so let us know. But hopefully you enjoyed on this one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.